Good morning. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Good evening to friends in North America. And hello to anyone watching on replay. My name is Nancy Hepker, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm going to close my door. There we go, to the craft room, because Glenn's working from home and the dogs are being a little feisty this morning, so we'll just be undisturbed. Get that out of the way. Um, today I am going to bring in an online exclusive product, Simply Sparkling, and it has coordinating dyes. Um, and this hasn't gotten a whole lot of play or airtime, I think, in general. Um, I've used it once or twice, um, but I really like it. It's, it's fun, sparkling, um, lots of great, great things you can do with it. So I'm looking forward to having a play this morning. And I've decided to incorporate three of the new in colors um, from the annual catalog that goes live on May 1st. Uh, this is Shy Shamrock, Pretty in Pink, which is actually a color that is returning from quite a few years ago, and uh, Peach Pie. So um, let's see who's here with us today. Oh, good morning, Christine, and hello, Paula and Gladys. Good morning, Jenny. Got half North American and half Australian friends here so far. That's nice to see. Um, okay, so I have a vision in my head. I have part of it prepped. We'll see how we turn out. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring in these pieces of paper and the coordinating ink colors. There's Peach Pie, Shy Shamrock, and Pretty in Pink. And then I have this soda can mounted up. Um, I don't think I've used these ink pads before, so we'll see how they stamp. Um, yeah, that's good. Clean that off a little bit. Close that up. Do one on Shy Shamrock. Now you might remember that I often say when you're using these photopolymer stamps, you should put a foam mat or stamp and pierce mat underneath. Well, and you notice I'm not doing that. Um, when it's line art, I don't tend to worry about it as much. That will go like that. Because um, it stamps just fine. Now, if I were trying to get a whole lot of um, very solid image like that, I would absolutely put my stamp and pierce or a foam mat underneath. But in fact, that stamped just fine, but I'm going to be covering it up. See, actually, I'm not covering that part up, but you'll see in a minute what I'm doing. Okay, put the stamp pads out of the way. I'm going to bring in my mini cut and emboss machine. There's a die to cut that out. Let's 
So if you have questions about anything I'm doing or any product that I'm using, just pop it into the comments and I will try to keep an eye on those. Even if you're watching on replay, I do see when people comment and I get back to them. If you are just starting out on your stamping journey and you don't have a cut and emboss machine, you might see me using this little one and think, oh, it's so cute, it's compact, it's great. But I'm gonna tell you my sincere advice is to invest in the full-size one because there will be some dies and a lot of embossing folders that will not fit in this one. and you will be very sad. So I do recommend that people go ahead and get the full size one. And if they find they're doing um, a lot of crafting in a small space or taking it up to um, crops or stamping events and you want the smaller one, it's a great little machine. But as a one and only, I do recommend the big one. So, okay, we will set that aside for now. So there are my three soda cans. And I have, there's another die that all in one, it cuts out the silver bottom and top and the little tab. So I went ahead and I cut them out from silver foil, which I'm happy to say is coming back in the new catalog. Makes me very happy because I've been hoarding my supply. And I went ahead and put adhesive sheet on the back of my silver foil before I cut out these pieces, which makes it really easy to stick these on. I'm just getting the alignment as tight as I can. go. There's one. I know some of my North American friends and my son, his girlfriend, went and watched, some of them didn't even have to go anywhere, but watched the eclipse. That looked really awesome. That one's alignment with the die is not fantastic, but it'll be okay because because I say it will. Glenn went and looked up. We've got, what, 2026 and 2028, I think we've got total solar eclipses here in Australia. And we would have to travel to see them, but he says we've got time to plan that. So that's good. I think one is going to go 
through New South Wales and one is going to go through like around Sydney and one is going to go around Brisbane. But we'll just wait a little bit closer and focus in on that. And get the one on the bottom. Nobody's feeling chattery this morning. Okay, so there are my three cans of soda. Now I'm going to put stuff on them. And I'm going to stamp, I think, on some basic white. And I've got a strawberry, a slice of citrus, and a peach. I'm going to do those in Memento Tuxedo Black. Now, you're probably used to seeing that for my Memento Tuxedo Black. And this ink pad is a felt ink pad with a um, linen top, whereas our classic ink pads have a foam pad, which makes, um, well, they're squishier and they, they ink up more evenly, I think. Um, and I caught a tip from a couple different demonstrators and I finally gave it a try. And I think I've shown it to you before, but I'm going to show you again. What I did was I bought Kraft White Ink Pad and it comes uninked and then a bottle a refill bottle that you can ink it up because that ink dries out pretty quickly so you put a little bit on and you use what you need and then you add more the next time but it's an uninked foam ink pad so i got one and um you can see i've labeled it and such but i inked it up with memento ink refill and that just comes, you know, in a bottle. And it took, oh, maybe a quarter or a third of a bottle to get this really nice and juicy. And now I don't have any issues with getting a nice even cover of ink in Memento. In fact, sometimes it's almost too much. Again, this is line art, so I am not particularly worried about having a foam mat underneath. But look at how easily that inks up. I don't have to sit there and work and work and work and work and work and go all the way around a lot to get it. So I am so far quite happy with that Stampin' Hack to upgrade my ink pad. It also makes it, I think, a little bit easier for customers to, you know, who come to my classes to not have different styles of ink pads and um, the memento ink pad was, could be a little bit messy when you take the lid on and off and put it down and what have you so I'm just trying to get the ink off my stamps so I don't have any accidents and now I'm going to bring in in color blends that's the peach and Shy Shamrock. Um, I'm also going to bring in. I'm going to start with Lemon Lolly, I think. And Real Red. So, let's see how we go here. Gonna do some shy shamrock on the leaves. And this is gonna get color tie in across all three of my soda cans. Yeah, just 
just a little bit of dark there at the veins of the leaves. That's real red for the strawberry. A little bit of shading. This is not my forte, but I'll just do a little bit there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Gladys, I'm glad you like that idea for the for the memento. I I have been really pleased with that, especially when you're trying to get a nice black, big black, thick sentiment. Oh my gosh, life changing, I think. So there's the peach pie light. Is that light? Ah, oh, that's dark. Well. We'll do a different coloring strategy on that one then. See how we go. Jenny, you've got a baby you're feeding. How nice. And let's see here. Lemon Lolly Light. dark. We're going to put in the rind here. Go with the one. Let's see how we do. Those are pretty quick to do. So, and then the dyes. So I had a choice. Oops. Let's get that on there a little nicer. What's going on here? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so you can do outline dye to cut out your stamped image, or it's got an internal one that you could do to make it um, just the die cut. And I debated which way I wanted to do it, and I finally decided we'd do a little stamping and coloring. So I am doing these one at a time. to get the best alignment that I can bring in this is post-it correction tape or cover-up tape and just a reminder when you're using any of this do um, brush it off or brush it off um, pat it a couple times against your clothes to pick up a little bit of lint so it's not quite so sticky and that will help it not stick to your cardstock if for some reason clothes, clothes lint weirds you out a little bit um, take your embossing buddy which is available in the uh, embossing editions kit um, and just like once lightly tap and the powder will cover up some of the adhesive and it won't stick so much. Um, so there you go. I think clothes lint is perfectly acceptable, but 
to each their own. Now, let's see here. Sorry, my video feed died. I had to reload it. We may have to do something different for internet at this house. It works. Just every once in a while, those weird things. Like every time I do a live, my feed, my personal feed gets bogged down. It keeps broadcasting apparently, but my monitor goes down. Okay, so there are those three. I will move this out of the way and we'll take a look at where we are on things. Move the blends out of the way. Bring these in. So I was thinking we would do like that and like that strawberry. I think we're okay with just the one. I thought about maybe putting two of each fruit, but I'm going to keep it with one. Now I'm going to bring in um, the card itself. And again, I have started with my vision. I didn't want you to have to sit and wait while I cut out all of these. This is a fun, fun die. Um, and you can see it cuts out these bubbles. And many of them also cut out perfect circles. Again, this is just basic white um, that I've put adhesive sheet on the back. And yeah. And then I've got a piece of, I've got a basic white thick card base some basic black and another piece of basic white, which I'm going to add these to. And I'm gonna dump everything off and start again. I just wanted, I, I had to do a little proof of concept, make sure I had everything that I needed. And I'm gonna lay these out again so that I know where I'm doing just these. I wish I hadn't dumped because I really liked how I had it before. Ah, uh, shoot. I really liked how I had it before. Let's see if I can get it going here. There we go, I think. Okay. So, see how easy it is to pull the adhesive sheet off these? Too bad, not too bad at all. So I got one little bit in there. Just like how that makes nice textured background without any extra color. There we go.
this one has quite a few left in there, but it's okay, we'll get them. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the cans, I think. I think I like them popped up even though they really would be flat on the cans. Okay, a little bit of cleanup here. So that is now covered up because of what I did. Uh. This is part of what happens when I don't actually do as much in advance as I should, perhaps. Eventually that will stop being sticky enough. Okay. See how we're doing here. Yep, getting there. there. Okay. Every time I do something, I learn a little bit more for the next time, right? OK. 
Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of fill with some of these. I definitely could cut another one or two of the open bubbles and fill in there, but I think this is going to do just fine for what I want. I have lots of these. So for the eclipse yesterday, it was actually pretty cool. Andrew, our son who lives in the Denver area and his girlfriend flew to Chicago and then I think took a train down to Champaign, which many of you know is where we lived for 10 years while the kids were young. And they spent the night and rented a car and he showed her a lot of places in Champaign, like our old house and schools and I don't know, lots of places. Went to places that were near and dear to our family's heart. Food places, of course. He is my son, right? Um, yeah, that's working well. And I've got lots more here. And um, places where he and his sister, um, third, third generation, of the family to enjoy. Like there's a place called Darling's Custard Cup and um, Glenn grew up not in Champaign, but near Champaign. And that was a place that his family often stopped when they were in the big city of Champaign. And um, yeah, the kids grew up going there. So lemon custard. Although Emma, the girlfriend, got the flavor of the week, which was peach. So we got lemon and peach. Their strawberry was very good, too. So it was very fun to hear about what they did and where they went. Then they drove down to uh, Carbondale, which is down in that very southern tip of Illinois, to be in totality. So if you're sticking with me while I'm doing all of this, thank you very much. This is taking a little bit of time, but not like it would have if I hadn't pre-cut all this stuff. So almost finished here, I think. Bit ugly there. Yes, I often take a photo too, or use my press and seal. I just got moving too fast. Okay. Almost finished here. stick this on here and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a layer it got we really 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 turned into autumn weather over the weekend um, 
and I'm in longer sleeves. And first thing in the morning, I actually have to have a second layer on, but it's a good thing. As far as I'm concerned, I like it cooler. So this is a very narrow margin. But I wanted that black frame. Now I'm trying to decide if we're going to go kind of deliberately cattywampus. How's that for a word? Or try to get them lined up. I'm gonna try to get them kind of lined up, I think. Sticky stuff on my fingers. I'm gonna pop those up too. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. my card base doesn't want to lie flat enough there we go make sure we're going the right direction there we go and again this is a very narrow very very narrow margin thought about just putting it on a black card base, but again, I decided I wanted it like so. Now, I do have plans for a sentiment here. Hang tight for just a second. Bossing buddy on there. Bring in my Versamark. And I've got the You're So Delightful stamp here. my white embossing powder. I'm doing a quick think about whether I want white or silver. I'm going to go with white. And 
and Okay, there we go. So I've, I've got two competing thoughts going on. That needs to get cut down. And I'm wondering about adding some straws to my drinks. And I think so. Do I think so? But I think I'm going to use I'm going to use some of this. Um, this is basic white, but I've got um, foam adhesive sheet on the back. So here's going to be a nice way for you to see how this black stamps up from this pad. I think that is fantastic. See how it cuts out now on these itty bitty pieces. And there is a die for that. Good, I'm glad that it's working. Sorry, it was problematic. Just fine. Let me take a quick look at something here. Wondering, wondering, wondering. It might not be better. Just love it. Look at that solid black stamping. Should I show you what I mean? Compared to, watch, it'll do it beautifully now with the memento too. Nope, I can already see. Can you see? Just tap, tap, tap and it didn't. Not as nice. 
Not as nice. A lot more effort to get that stamp inked up. Okay, let's try this again. And I think you'll see why in just a second here. For sticking with me on this longer card today. I'm never quite sure if you want me to keep them really quick and simple. I keep hearing everyone's got a very short attention span and really under 10 minutes is ideal. And then I see all kinds of people doing hour, hour and a half, which that's too long, I think. But I figure every once in a while, if I do a more involved card, those who want to watch will watch, and those who don't, won't. But if you want to give me feedback on that, I'd be happy to take it. Okay. Okay. So the reason I abandoned the popped up one was because I realized that what I really want to do is get that under under the rim of the can. Whoops, not that one. There we go. So I'm going to put a little dimensional right at the top there and I think I'll be able to yep lift that adhesive that's good there we go that I like doesn't need to be into there much, just enough so that it looks like it's down in that hole. And I really like that pop of black and white there. There we go. Let me double check my dies just one second.
This is wonderful thought. Let's give that a try. Just don't trust myself to cut it as skinny as I want by hand. see that moved. Sometimes I put them on a bigger piece and then the bigger piece is easier to cut down on the trimmer. But there we go. just trimming off the other end. I could just snip it, but this is pretty easy to do too. And then it's got the same slightly rounded corners. Back on here. I'm going to be really, really pedantic here. Pedantic, picky, fussy. in there. Go. One way or the other. Oh, there's a dimensional under there. Get out of the way. Get, get, get. Uh, sometimes I need to learn when to just let it alone. Off to the side, we're centered. Think on that while I put another circle in there.
Okay, Michelle says the middle. Well, nice to see you, Michelle. Yeah, I'm I'm really thrilled Gladys with the straws. Okay. Middle or side? I think everything else is symmetrical, so maybe the sentiment should go in the middle. Middle middle. that there for a second uh, yes of course somebody likes the side you're just doing that to be contrary aren't you Paula there we go that's it I don't think I'm going to put anything inside this could be a just because card it could be a birthday card I think that's pretty fun I hope you like it. Thanks for joining me today. Um, you guys probably couldn't hear it, but a moment ago the doorbell rang and I know that that is my Stampin' Up! pre-order. So next week, we'll see what kind of fun goodies I've gotten. And I will see you then. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.